G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome back to Pouring in Isolation. <laughs> I am going to do two big flip cups for you today and I'm using a different pouring medium. Now, did you guys see the ring pours that I did? I've done, I don't know that they're all up yet, but I did three. The first one was this one in yellow, orange, red, and purple. This was the group challenge colors, and it has dried beautifully. Look at that. So pretty, lovely and smooth. So that's that one there. I'll show you the other two in, in next videos. But I've got a little bit of this pouring medium left. Now, is it better without that big light? Let me have a look. I never know. Oh, it's still a bit glary. Do, do you like the light on or off? Oh, I don't know. I'll just leave it on. Anyway, so that's that one. Uh, and I'm using that same pouring medium because I had a little bit left. It's, it's empty now. My little bottle's empty. But what's in here is 400 grams of float troll. 300 grams of gloss medium and varnish. I think that's the liquid pa uh, Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. 200 grams of GAC 800 and 100 grams of Liquitex pouring medium. And I made up a big jug of it, as you can see. And I've got a few pours out of it. I did actually make up a little bit more. Um, I wanted to see how it went with the um, flip cup. Um, oh, I wanted to show you something else. Hang on one sec, let me find where I've put it. Oh, here it is. This was the, the rows that I was trying to do. I'll come around here. That was the rose pour that I did with this pouring medium. So it's pretty much dry, but look at the cells. I've got a couple of really cute little cells in there and then I thought oh, I wonder how it would go with a flip cup because the cells I did get are really really cute so that is where this idea from came today um, just to see how it's going to go in a flip cup so let's get to it oh my colors now they're all the same colors as that rose ring pour um, pinks shades of pink the first one, this dark one here, I've added that one. I don't think that one was in the, the rose for, but I've added it because I needed a little bit more dark contrast. It's called mauve. It's a really, really dark. It's more of a burgundy, really. I have to buy that one from overseas through Amazon because I can't buy it in Australia. I need another one, actually. Uh, and then the magenta is that one. And then Montmartre brought out a new color. They've got a few new ones now. This one's pink, which is that lovely bright pink and then I've got white um, and then these two shades I've just made myself from mixing uh, other Montmartre colors together like pinks and a bit of orange and you know just to get like a musky and a pale pink so those are my colors let me get my gloves on and we'll start layering hey I'm gonna drink the water I'm so dry lately all right, I'm just going to do two big cups and flip them out from each other. So that's what I'm going to do. Righto. Oh, oil. Nearly forgot the oil. Uh, treadmill silicone oil for cells. Oh, that's the other thing. With this, it was quite a thick mix. So I've had to use two parts of this pouring medium to one part paint to get the same consistency uh, that I would normally Get. I'll show you the consistency. Oh, hang on, I've got to take my gloves off now so I can touch the screen focus for you. All right, so it's the same consistency, mound on a mound. When I do a, a circle like that, it should sit for three seconds. One, two, three. One, two, three, and that should be gone. Whoops. One, two, three. All right, so that's my 
preferred consistency for flip cups. And I remembered to go back to focus. Right, so um, I have got 80 grams of pouring medium and 40 grams of paint. So that's the two to one ratio. That's 120 grams, which is four ounces. I'm just gonna do three drops in each because that's gonna be plenty, I think. I won't do the white. I think this color here is going to be opaque because it's it's basically a white anyway with a little hint of pink so it's going to be an opaque color the mauve I'm assuming is a semi-transparent and a good stir this one yeah not sure <clears throat> it could go either way I'm just not putting the two light or um, light colors next to each other or the two dark colors next to each other I don't want the two opaques next to each other I don't know why I'm stirring you you haven't got any oil in you so actually I might swap those because these two are very similar so I have a nice bright one there and then a nice bright one there what did I get up to I might have stirred this one I stirred you moved everyone out of order now I don't know where, what I'm up to. I think I've stirred everybody now. So how's everyone going in isolation? Hope you're all keeping safe and happy and keeping yourselves occupied. I'm painting a lot. Hopefully I can still get two layers in these big cups. I've poured half out, left half in there. So get two layers. I'll put these a little bit close to each other so I can just go straight over the top. There we go. They are big cups. So it takes a lot to go over one layer. I didn't think my medium size, this is my small cup and that's my large. I've got a, a medium in between, but I didn't know whether or not the paint would fit and I didn't want it to overflow. So I thought I'd better go for the next size up. That's probably a little bit on the big side. I hope this works. Yeah, I was really impressed with a couple of little cells that I did get in that rose pour. So I thought, oh, I wonder if it'll work. <laughs> then I've tried to get it to the same consistency. I've gone by my three second rule. So hopefully it's the same because I don't think it really matters, you know, what paint you're using or what pouring medium you're using as long as you've got your consistency right because that's the really important thing is getting that consistency right. And it really doesn't matter what you're using because too thick a mix will make your cells sort of go just like blobs and go grainy. Too thin and they'll just overstretch everywhere. So it takes a little bit of practice, but my advice to you is just pick a pouring medium and pick a brand of paint and stick to it and just experiment with those paints and that pouring medium until you've got it right. Um, there's no point saying, oh, that didn't work, and then you move to a different pouring medium and a different paint brand, and then you have to start all over. And write down what you've done so that you can remember what worked and what didn't work. And if you have to change your ratio, then you can write it down and say, okay, I need to add more paint or I need to add more pouring medium. So have a little notebook and you write everything down. Otherwise you'll go, oh, that worked. Now I can't remember what I did. Wish I'd written it down. <laughs> so yeah, little, little helpful trick there. I've gone through a few books already over my last three years of pouring. A book a year. Write down my ideas and things I want to try and ratios so if I ever want to go back and look up something that I did maybe two years ago I can because it's all there in black and white all right nearly done you guys you can fast forward the layering bit if you want I guess
So Easter's coming, those that celebrate Easter. Uh, for me, it's next weekend. I don't know when you'll see this video, though. It might not be until closer to Easter because I've got a few videos waiting in line to be uploaded. So I'm not sure when this one's going to go up, but happy Easter to everybody. I don't know how much of a celebration it's going to be. Uh, my husband will be here because you know how he works away two weeks at a time. So he's actually rostered back home for Easter, which is the first time in absolute years that he's been home for an Easter. And it's going to be a really quiet one because I can't have my kids over and my family over. Now, Gemma lives here with me, so she'll be here and my husband Dave will be here. Um, my other daughter that she's here every two weeks, she'll be here. But um, oh, look at that tiny little wreath. Oh, he's so cute. I don't know that my son and his fiance will be able to come over because we're limited to the amount of people we're allowed, aren't we? So I don't know. Are you allowed family members? I'm not sure. So it could be a, a quiet one. I don't know that I've told you the story of how I met my husband. I met him when I was 14 years old and he was 15 years old. And uh, I used to ride horses. I was pony club and gymkhana, one day events, you know, cross country, show jumping, all that kind of stuff. And um, him and his friends used to come up to the pony club on a Sunday and watch the girls ride, you know, as young boys do. And uh, yeah, we met and went out and been with him ever since, since I was 14 and he was 15. Young love, hey? Three beautiful kids together. Right, let's flip these babies over and see what happens, hey? I should move you out of the way, otherwise I'm going to knock you over. Let's put some paint on the corners. See how stripey it gets when you drag? Oh, it's looking good. I'm going to have to go over this side of the table because I can't reach otherwise. I'll just... Pop some paint on the corners. I will be tipping the stripies off anyway. Don't be, um, don't don't tip whatever's in there back on. It's just going to be stripy. Yeah, tempted. Don't be tempted to do it. It's not worth it. Just leave that beautiful blended center. Look at that. And I, by doing that, I I don't get those. You know when I do a flip and drag, I get stripes. And I get lines through but when you just do that you don't tend to get that which is really good look at my cells you guys they're looking really good right, I'm going to cover half the canvas because I think they'll grow quite a lot if I had to torch them now so let me just cover the canvas here half of it And then I'll torch. And the other good thing about flipping this way is it doesn't matter how you tilt because I don't have to worry about keeping my lines. We know when I do my flip and drags, I have to keep, well, I think I do have to keep my lines straight. But this technique, um, I can sort of tip the canvas all over the place and not have to worry too much about... Um, paint on my clothes <laughs> about keeping my lines now I do need to tip that off but see I've got plenty of paint and while I move my paint up I can tip that off right, back to the center now this is where I'll torch and get the cells up and then as I tilt to cover the rest of the canvas that's when my strel my, my cells will stretch out and uh, grow a bit that's how you get big cells. A lot of people say to me, oh, I can only get little cells, but you need to stretch them. Now, I think it's going to be quite reactive, so I won't get too close. I've never done a flip cup pour with this pouring medium, so I'm not sure how reactive it's going to be. What are you? Are you a bubble or are you a blob of paint? I'm not getting close enough to actually pop bubbles. If you're getting close enough to pop bubbles, you're too close. I will tell you that. And if you're too close, you're going to get 
big colonies of cells and you're going to get caterpillars. So if you're worried about your um, bubbles, just pop them with a skewer. Don't try and get close enough with your torch to pop them because that'll be too close. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. I'm just going really, really carefully with my torch. I'm going over a few times. Heat the paint gently, bring that silicone oil to the surface. Because it's an oil, it wants to rise to the surface. Oh, I got too close there. Um, yeah, it, it wants to come to the surface. So it just needs a little bit of help with the heat to get it to the surface. But don't get too close. leave it at that for now. I'm not really getting anything through there. I don't want to overheat it. You can always torch again afterwards after I've stretched everything out a little bit. A little bit close there. I've got a bit of a colony coming up. It's not too bad though. I don't think I've got any caterpillars which is nice. I don't know what that is. Ooh, big blob, blob of unmixed paint. If you see anything, get it out early before you start stretching everything. Alrighty, wish I had a little bit more cells just there. Let's stretch this now, I need to get that off. I need to get that corner off. And I don't wanna use the corner catcher again because I need to spread this paint because I use a lot of paint so that I can stretch it you need to walk your paint back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to go back to the middle a little bit and then I can just change direction and go over there and turn it. Okay. <laughs> Did you see how I turned it? I wanted to get rid of those big blobs here. I sort of have to go down and then around. Alrighty, that's looking really pretty. I want some more cells over here though, so let me just wipe off my hands and I'm going to torch that little corner there. Well, I must say I'm, I'm impressed. I don't know that it's any better than, you know, my pouring medium that I always use, but it's nice to know that other things work and give a good result. Now, because I've torched there and got those up, I need to just, you know, stretch them a little bit. Actually, you're a bit blobby there. I might take you off. Yep, off you go. So just back and forth. I'm not really actually taking any paint off the surface at the moment. I'm just hopefully getting those little cells to grow. How's that looking? Bring everything back to the middle. All right, I think that's looking really pretty. I'll take you down for a close up. I'm actually quite impressed with those cells. Very nice. These ones here, one, two, three, they've got three, three rings in them. I guess I could have got away with two whites. No, actually I don't. Um, sometimes you don't see the white very much. Some, sometimes my white just gets lost because, you know, I have in six colours, I've only got one white, so a sixth of them. <laughs> so, you know, it's not a lot of white, I guess. But it has shown up quite nicely, the white. Now I'm just going to turn this light off. I think it's nicer for a close up when it's not so glary. Could someone please tell me, do you like the overhead, the big light on, the big ring light? Or do you prefer no lights? 
Right. Here we go. Pretty in pink, hey? Turn that one off as well. Is that better? Yeah, it's more of a pink now, isn't it? I just don't know. What's better? Light on, light off. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> That's from the Karate Kid movie. All right, now these were the cells I was telling you about. Uh, it doesn't look that pink in here. It looks more, again, my colours aren't true looking through my screen here but when i put the photo up i'll show you see it's it's more it's showing more of a yellow pink here whereas when i go out like that see it's more of a true pink there it's just when i zoom in i lose my true color but look at the cells they've got multi rings around them one there look at these ones see they've got white actually they've got um, that dark purple around them then they've got white then they've got pale pink so they've got three three rings which is really really nice oh look at that one look at you you're pretty aren't you so yeah, multi-celled rings. I love it when there's three rings of colour. Got a bit of white down here. It's nice to see the white show up. Rings, white rings around them there. So there we go, happy with that one, oops I'm in the light again, um, yeah so this pouring medium worked really nicely. I don't particularly like pouring medium on its own, I think uh, the cells are too sort of loose and wobbly, I think they need more of a binder with them. That's why I use glue because I get a good strong binding and I get a, a good shaped round cell. And these, you know, and it's cheap. This mixture, you know, gloss medium and GAC and Liquitex pouring medium, they're expensive products. And if you can get exactly the same look from glue and water, which I think you do, I don't think this is any better than my glue and water mix. Um, but yeah, you know, if you can afford all those ingredients and you want to give it a go, go for it. Otherwise, stick to the, the glue and water. But as I said, I wanted to just use it up. I had some left and I thought, I wonder what will happen. And there we go. Now we know. It's it's really pretty. And I've got no caterpillars. Have I got caterpillars? Mm, there's one. There's one there. Whoops. Because I got a bit close with the torch there. But apart from that, it's really pretty. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to clean this mess up and get ready for my next pour. What will I do next? <laughs> Feel free to give me any ideas, you guys, if you want me to try something. Feel free to um, message me in the comments below and um, we'll see what we can do, hey? Because I'm looking for new ideas all the time. All right, thanks again for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you all real soon. Bye for now.